Hello everyone. Welcome to another live crafting video here at my YouTube channel. My name's Christina and we're going to be creating two different cards today um, using some new products from Concord and Ninth. I did some brainstorming earlier and I had two similar ideas but that have different techniques and they're pretty simple so I thought it'd be quick and easy to show them to you in a live. The products that I'm using today from Concord and Knight, um, this first one is this stamp set called Simply You. And I really, really love this sort of leaf uh, pattern that they've created. And it really reminded me of some similar cards that I've made in the last, I don't know, year or two, where I've painted the leaves myself. So we're gonna play with that idea here in a minute. And, um, well, it's actually the second card. And then I actually have this die set that is supposed to coordinate with it called the Simply You Dies. And I'm gonna be using uh, the Love You die up here. I might, I might decide to do the scallop cut on one of the cards, but I'm mostly just gonna keep it pretty simple. So, and if you're, want to do something similar. I've got paints and water, uh, paints and color pencils today. So we're going to be playing with all the different mediums. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to get up my misty and we're going to start with some stamping and we're going to, since we're going to have a, the stamp out and in the misty, we're just going to go ahead and prep the stamping for both cards. So, okay, the idea behind the first card is we're using some light green cardstock. This is the Sprout color from Concord and Ninth. And we're gonna to do tone on tone stamping. So I'm going to use a green ink to do my stamping as well. So I'm gonna put that in the corner of my Misty here. And we're gonna get out this large, well, I don't know that I call it a background. It's not quite uh, large enough to cover your whole card front for an A2 card. But it's pretty big. It's, I mean, it'll it'll cover quite a bit of it. I love, it. I love that they've sized these leaves to be the perfect size for an A2 card front. I love it. You don't even have to like mask anything or cut anything down. Although you could if you wanted to. The ink color I'm using today is parsley from Concord and Ninth, and Concord and Ninth has four different green colors. They they've got their green colors covered, <laughs> and this is the second lightest. So I thought about going straight to a darker color like the cardstock I'm gonna be using here in a minute, but then I thought I could stamp these leaves in kind of a mid-tone green and then add a little shading with colored pencils. So that's what we're doing today. Um, Kathy is asking if I like the glass board that I'm working on. And I do, I do really like it. In fact, just this week, I cleaned it. I had gotten a bunch of adhesive on it and I just used a, an X-Acto knife, a blade, and just scraped the adhesive right off. And it was so easy and simple to clean. I love it. I also have the white version, which I don't use as much because I am filming most of the time, but I have the white version too. And um, I like to use that for when I'm painting because I can put my inks or paints directly on the mat and I can see the true color. I have a discount code link down below in my supplies if you're interested. I'm gonna grab my Stampin' Butt glider. Okay. Those leaves aren't perfectly solid. I think my ink pad wasn't really juicy. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this one more time. That's the great part of using a misty stamp positioning tool. Uh, you have because the stamp hasn't moved and the paper's in the same spot, you have the opportunity to stamp it multiple times and get a better coverage. Oh, Carissa in the comments has a really good point about that glass board, this glass board mat. The lines are not on the top surface of the glass, it's below. So you don't ever have to worry about doing something that'll take the lines off or anything like that. All right, much more solid. And we're gonna go ahead and stamp the same stamp on this green cardstock. Now this is evergreen cardstock from Concord and Ninth. And turns out, Simon says stamp has an evergreen ink as well. Now I do have the Concord and Ninth evergreen ink, but 
for my second card, I'm going to be using some uh, mica paints, some iridescent paints from Yuli Watercolors, and I'm going to be painting over the leaves. So I needed an ink that uh, was more on the water resistant side. And the Concord and Ninth inks I checked on the back, it does not say anything about being water resistant or anything like that. But I do know that the, the Simon inks, the original Simon inks, are water resistant. In fact, they say it on the back. Where is it? Will not smear when using watercolors and markers. So it's both waterproof and alcohol ink friendly. It's kind of a great ink formulation. So it's a great ink color and it's also evergreen. And I picked this color in particular because I'm going to be painting over the top. And so I, I kind of want to use it almost like a no line watercoloring situation where you would use a very, very light ink on white cardstock, kind of like a, you just want a color that's close to the cardstock. So it's going to give me a very nice tone on tone effect um, and give me the opportunity to paint right over the top. That was a really long explanation for this ink and my choice for picking it. Sorry. <laughs> this would actually be really pretty for Christmas cards. I know that's random, but um, you could do red berries and it kind of has a Christmassy vibe. Okay. All right. This one doesn't have to be stamped perfectly because like I said, I'll be painting over it. So just leave it at that. Bunch. This is ballet slippers ink or not ink cardstock ballet slippers cardstock from Concord and ninth. And I chose that one so I could stamp the flowers and have a little bit of space around them. It's so interesting, depending on how much I squish the stamp, I get the center of the flower or I don't. It fills in. I'm trying to be careful so I can get the center of the flower. All right, so I'm not sure how many of these flowers I need. I'm thinking maybe like maybe five. So I've cut out five. I'm going to save the remainder of my flowers for later, just in case. Okay. So this actually stamped a whole lot darker than I thought it would. Like that's crazy, but you know, we're still going to use our colored pencils. Like I said, the largest area in the center will be covered by my greeting. So I'm not going to worry about that, but let's see if we can do like some lighter, you know, I don't know if that's really going to show up. That's not really showing up much, is it? Maybe if I put white underneath it. Let's see. We're just testing this out. It might be that we just add the darker areas. Oh, I like that. That looks kind of fun.
for the background on our second card, I'm going to be using the Christmas watercolor set from Yuli Watercolors. Now this is one that I bought, oh gosh, it, it was the Christmas 2020 set. The 2021 set, which is now being sold, has additional colors. I think it has maybe like four or five additional colors or maybe even six. So um, this doesn't have all the colors in it, but I'm mostly just going to be using like the two greens and maybe the gold. So, um, and those colors, I mean, all of these are included in the other set. So here are the two backgrounds, same stamp, but very different looks, right? So now I'm going to take this little scallop, oh, it fits so perfectly. Um, Yuli, Yuli Watercolors, they have their own website now. So um, if you click on my link in the supplies that for Yuli Watercolors Christmas set, it actually I think it gives you a little bit of a discount and it also gives me a kickback. I'm not sure what, how much the discount is. I'll have to ask Jeannie about that. I think you get like a, maybe a 5% off or something. So you can use that link down below and they have all of their watercolor sets listed. Oh, beautiful. And there were just a couple little spots when you see that with the pink. That is so pretty. I love it. Oh my gosh. All you Concord and Ninth people just making beautiful product. I love it. Okay. Then I can take my Glad Press and Seal. In fact, I'm going to tear that so it's a little smaller. I can just pick that all up. I'm going to apply glue to the back all at the same time, and then I can move it to my project. And the Glad Press and Seal is just sticky enough to hold it down while I'm putting my adhesive on. And also um, just clear enough that I can see where it's being positioned. I'll just hold that. And I want it like right there. Let me move it around just a little bit. And I can just kind of press that down. I'm going to let it dry a little bit and then I can pull the press and seal up. All right. And then very carefully come over here. Press that down. Oh my word, I love that. I love that so much. How cute is that? Okay. All right, and then we've got these cute 
little flowers that we can place on it. those turned out so cute worth the 90 minute crafting session <laughs> right so here are the two cards for today's live stream i love how they turned out the pops of pink and kind of a purpley color over here i think it turned out so so cute people in the comments watching the live said that it had a retro feel to it or vintage feel um yeah and also very springy perfect for this time of year we want spring we want spring to come so thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys in another video very, very soon.